Welcome to this first time introduction to Lab Monster Toolkit. We're going to show you how to do a first time setup for the program and basically a, a simple workflow for how to get started. Now, I'm assuming that you have already installed Lab Monster Toolkit and that you've also already installed the VIGM bus driver, which is required for the software. So, first thing you want to do is unplug all gamepad input devices any controllers, any controller adapters, may flash adapters, etc. You should see no controllers in your device manager. You can pull up the device manager by searching for it here. If there are no controllers in the device manager, then you should, can go ahead and open Lab Monster Toolkit. Uh, it is searchable in your, in your search bar here, or you can find it in the program files. When Lab Monster Toolkit boots up, there's a terminal window here. It's in beta still, so this is basically to show you any errors or messages that may occur. If any text appears in this terminal on boot up, the boot up has probably failed. And so you should close the program and try opening it again. Sometimes, rarely, but sometimes the VIGM client uh, fails to load and you get a, the program has, uh, Fail, has closed successfully or has ended successfully, you'll get a message like that in here. Uh, the toolkit won't function if that happens. So uh, right now we've got a boot that has no text in it, so we're good to go. And you can see that there are now two Xbox 360 controllers in our device manager. That is these two virtual controllers right here. So at this point, it, uh, if you have a Xbox 360 compatible gamepad, then you can go ahead and plug that in. Uh, we'll have a separate video telling you how to use the X360 controller emulator. But for this one, we're going to assume that you just have a gamepad that works. So you can see my gamepad is plugged in and is showing inputs in all three columns here. So let's maximize this. You can also see we've got three controllers over here. That is how things should be. If you have more than three controllers here, then something bad has happened. So let's maximize this and talk about the UI. Uh, on the right, we have the source controller. This is your physical controller. You can select which physical controller you want. If you followed this set of instructions, your physical controller should be on input three. If it is not, you can try the other inputs and see if it's on a different input. Uh, you can also look at the player numbers here, player one and two. If this is, says player two and player three, chances are that your controller is on player one. Uh, you may have plugged in out of order. It's totally fine to use player one as the source controller, provided you're not trying to play back anything in the player one slot. A lot of games uh, will just default to player one to being the controlling player. So I like to have player one be this virtual gamepad so that we can play back uh, sequences easily. Now, uh, these two virtual controller gamepads are, we call them V-pads, virtual, virtual gamepads. Uh, they are sort of where all of the control for the game comes from. They've got four different modes. There's Mirror Master Input, which is what we are doing right now. There's Playback Sequence, which we're going to cover in another video. There's UI Input, which allows you to click on this UI up here and just uh, have the inputs be whatever the UI is uh, clicked to. And there's Disable, which just sets it to neutral and doesn't do anything. So we're going to cover these three, uh, Mirror Master, UI Input, and Disable in this video. And let's get the actual toolkit hooked up to a game. So we're going to go ahead and boot Marvel 3. So let's boot it up. And we're going to use the gamepad to navigate within the game. If you have a uh, keyboard and mouse setup and you try navigating with your keyboard and mouse, uh, it's not going to go well. Uh, many games will, especially Guilty Gear, but other, I've had I've had issues with games where you use your game your keyboard and mouse to navigate within the menus, and it just screws up which controller it thinks you're supposed to be using. So the first thing we're going to do is get to training mode, since that's where you should be using this software. That's where that's the only place this software has been tested for any of these games. I, I don't play this game very well, so you'll have to forgive me for uh, just selecting random characters here. Alright, so we can see Dante is successfully being controlled. Now let's make it so that Wolverine is also being controlled by Gamepad 2. So we're going to go into the menu here, change this to be player two controlled, and when we hit back, it's gonna ask us to 
press start on player two's controller. Now this is a very key and important moment because it's easy to screw this up. What you want to do is go into the toolkit, go to UI input and click the start button in the UI. And then you can go back to mirror master input. If you press start with your controller three, it's kind of random which of these two controllers it decides to use because two controllers are basically hitting start on the same frame simultaneously. So now you can see Wolverine is being controlled by the same input as Dante. Exactly what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable uh, Dante here, or uh, the secondary input. So now we're just controlling Dante and Wolverine is just chilling. And now I'm gonna show you how to hook up the frame-based input, basically this entire timing uh, window at the top. If we're in timer-based mode, which is what this uh, this is currently defaulting in, uh, the toolkit uses high-precision timers to make a best guess estimate as to when you're pressing buttons and how those buttons should be played back. It's pretty good, it's not perfect. So there's a better mode to use, which is frame-based. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the task manager with Control-Alt-Escape, and we're gonna go to Details. And we're going to find the uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite Process. Sorry, <laughs> Infinite. I play Infinite more than three. Uh, UMVC3. This is what we're looking for. So process number 338504. So we're going to click on this. We're going to go into frame-based. This red is fine. This tells you that when you're in frame-based, you're not going to get any inputs uh, fed out of these controllers until you have a game iterating frames that is connected. Basically, the game's frames are what drive the controller playback. So we're going to punch in this PID, hit connect, and now we have the frame rate of the game. This isn't really the frame rate of the game. This is the rate of uh, input query from the game. So this is how many times inputs are being queried from the game per second. And now we can see we're back in the game and inputs are working. If we go back to mirror master input on uh, Wolverine, he's also moving back and forth. And now, the other thing we can see is this game time speed is working. So I can set the game to 3 fourths speed, I can set the game to run at 1 half speed, I can set the game to run at 1 quarter speed, and let's go back to full speed, I can pause the game. And I can use this step function to step the game one frame forward every uh, time I click step. And I can hit uh, the resume button to resume. So that's all we're going to cover in this video. Just a short setup for the game in Marvel 3. In the next video, we will cover sequences and how to play them back and record them and how that whole, uh, how that whole system works. Thank you for watching.